Time now for Weekending Sports. We start with some boxing news this evening. And our amateur boxers have their toughest test this year so far when they host fighters from Jamaica's Stony Hill Gym. Tomorrow evening, K-Man's best amateurs like Southpaw Dariel Ebanks, Kendall Ebanks, Jason Parchment and Troy O'Neill attempt to put on a classic show for the public at the top-notch Dalmain Ebanks Boxing Gym over there at the Truman Bodden Sports Complex. You're looking at video from a previous fight night at the facility recently. This morning, I had the chance to sit down with the national coach, Donny Anglin, who will be in the corner guiding K-Man's boxers tomorrow night, including some first-timers. Should be very exciting. We have fighters that Jamaica's threatening to beat. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very interesting fight. Mm -hmm. I think we get the competition is getting much much higher now. We've got a youngster, Dari, uh, Tafari Ebanks. Mm -hmm. It looks good. Let's see what happens when he fights. Uh, he hasn't fought yet. Mm -hmm. From the boxing ring to some football now in Minnesota, we go where Academy football team is representing Cayman at the Schwann USA Cup. The under 11 and under 12 teams standing tall at the competition that features some 417 teams from 18 countries. You're watching video of one of the matches, Cayman Academy team celebrating a victory uh, over the Mexicans earlier today, scoring nine goals in their competition so far this week and only conceding one to top their group phase. That group had some 34 teams. The youngsters advance to the semis tomorrow. Earlier this week, they outplayed their rivals in the weekend knockout tournament to win the knockout cup. This is the under-11s. It's been a long week for the youngsters, playing several games each day. And remarkably, the under-11s are undefeated. The under-12s have also been stellar with, a, with one win, one loss, and a tie in their record. And in their group, the under-12s advance to this evening's quarterfinals. I have the final update on the youngsters and hopefully some video from Minnesota of their progress thanks to Shannon Seymour and Sheena Hurlstone for supplying us with that video from Minnesota. Good job, guys. To some track and field now, and Usain Bolt shows why he's still the number one sprinter on the planet. Bolt rises to the challenge of teammate Asafa Powell and clocks 9.84 seconds at the IWF Diamond League in Paris. Let's take a look now as Bolt gets a good start uh, with Powell. Bolt running out of lane four, Powell in lane six, Bolt in the purple, Powell in the blue, but Bolt at this stage was in full command, running away from Powell in his 9.84, Powell was second in 9.91, and the youngster, Johan Blake, he was third, there he is in the yellow top, next to Bolt, he was third for Jamaican clean sweep of the top prizes, so no injury worries for Bolt, as he made light work of Powell and the rest of the opposition in Paris today. And we end with some bizarre news and footage tonight. Take a look at this video coming up from the Tour de France race uh, this week. It's Australian Mark Renshaw, and he headbutts a rival, Julian Dean, in the sprint to the Stage 11 finish uh, yesterday. Renshaw claims he was trying to hold his line and stay upright in the race. Here's the video. Uh, but the Australian was expelled from the Tour de France. There's Renshaw headbutting Dean as he tried to make room for himself and his teammate. He was disqualified after it was ruled that his actions aided his teammate Mark Cavendish to victory. What do you think? Was this dirty riding or a man just trying to win the good old pressure of competing at the highest level?